Haribo, namaste everyone. Welcome back. We are continuing with the Bhagavad Gita as it is by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. This time we are going to be reading 108 of the most important slokas from the Bhagavad Gita. These are important verses for memorizing. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada has said that when you quote a verse, your argument becomes authoritative. Chapter 1, Text 1. Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjaya, after assembling in the place of pilgrimage at Kuruketra, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu do, being desirous to fight? Chapter 2, Text 7. Now I am confused about my duty and have lost all comp composure because of weakness. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me clearly what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. Chapter 2, Text 11. The Blessed Lord said, while speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. Chapter 2, Text 12 Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Chapter 2, Text 13 As the embodied soul continually passes in this body, from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. The self-realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. Chapter 2, Text 14 O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception, O scion of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. Chapter 2, Text 20 for the soul, there is never birth nor death, nor, having once been, does he ever cease to be. He is unborn, eternal, ever-existing, undying, and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. Chapter 2, Text 22 As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, Similarly, the soul accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. Chapter 2, Text 23 The soul can never be cut into pieces by any weapon, nor can he be burned by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. Chapter 2, Text 27 for one who has taken his birth, death is certain. And for one who is dead, birth is certain. Therefore, in the unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not lament. Chapter 2, Text 30 O descendant of Bharata, he who dwells in the body is eternal and can never be slain. Therefore, you need not grieve for any creature. Chapter 2, Text 40 In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution, and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. Chapter 2, Text 41 Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose, and their aim is one. O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many-branched. 
Chapter 2, Text 44 In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence, and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination of devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. Chapter 2, Text 45 The Vedas mainly deal with the subject of the three modes of material nature. Rise above these modes, O Arjuna. Be transcendental to all of them. Be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety, and be established in the self. Chapter 2, Text 46 All purposes that are served by the small pond can at once be served by the great reservoirs of water. Similarly, all the purposes of the Vedas can be served to one who knows the purpose behind them. Chapter 2, Text 59 The embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment though the taste for sense objects remains, but ceasing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he is fixed in consciousness. Chapter 2, Text 62 While contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them, and from such attachment lust develops, and from lust anger arises. Chapter 2, text 63. From anger, delusion arises, and from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost, and when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Chapter 2, text 64. One who can control his senses by practicing the regulative principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord and thus become free from all attachment and aversion. Chapter 2, Text 69 What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self-controlled, and the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. Chapter 3, Text 9 Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work binds one to this material world. Therefore, O son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction, and in that way you will always remain unattached and free from bondage. Chapter 3, Text 14 All living bodies subsist on food grains, which are produced from rain. Rains are produced by performance of yajna, or sacrifice, and yajna is born of prescribed duties. Chapter 3, Text 21 Whatever action is performed by a great man, common men follow in his footsteps, and whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. Chapter 3, Text 27 The bewildered spirit soul, under the influence of the three modes of material nature, thinks himself to be the doer of activities, which are in actuality carried out by nature. Chapter 3, Text 37 The Blessed Lord said, It is lust only, Arjuna, which is born of contact with the material modes of passion, and later transformed into wrath, and which is the all-devouring, sinful enemy of this world. Chapter 4, Text 1 The Blessed Lord said, I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god, Vivishwan, and Vivishwan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind, 
and Manu, in turn, instructed it to Ikaku. Chapter 4, Text 2 This supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession, and the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time, the succession was broken, and therefore the science, as it is, appears to be lost. Chapter 4, Text 3 That very ancient science of the relationship with the Supreme is today told by me to you, because you are my devotee as well as my friend. Therefore, you can understand the transcendental mystery of this science. Chapter 4, Text 6 Although I am unborn, and my transcendental body never deteriorates, and although I am the Lord of all sentient beings, I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. Chapter 4, Text 7 Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice, O descendant of Bharata, and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. Chapter 4, Text 8 In order to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to reestablish the principles of religion, I advent myself millennium after millennium. Chapter 4, Text 9 One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Chapter 4, Text 10 Being freed from attachment, fear, and anger, being fully absorbed in me, and taking refuge in me, many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me, and thus they all attained transcendental love for me. Chapter 4, Text 11 All of them, as they surrender unto me, I reward accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Pritha. Chapter 4, Text 13 According to the three modes of material nature and the work ascribed to them, the four divisions of human society were created by me, and although I am the creator of this system, you should know that I am yet the non-doer, being unchangeable. Chapter 4, Text 34 Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you, because he has seen the truth. Chapter 5, Text 18 The humble sage, by virtue of true knowledge, sees with equal vision a learned and gentle brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog-eater or outcast. Chapter 5, Text 22 An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. Chapter 5, Text 29 the sages, knowing me as the ultimate purpose of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attain peace from the pangs of material miseries. Chapter 6, Text 17 He who is temperate in his habits of eating, sleeping, working and recreation can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. 
Chapter 6, Text 41 The unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people, or into a family of rich aristocracy. Chapter 6, Text 47 And of all yogis, he who always abides in me, with great faith, worshipping me in transcendental loving service, is most intimately united with me in yoga, and is the highest of all. Chapter 7, Text 3 Out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection, and of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. Chapter 7, Text 4 Earth, Water, Fire, Air, Ether, Mind, Intelligence, and False Ego, all together, these eight comprise my separated material energies. Chapter 7, Text 5 Besides this inferior nature, O mighty armed Arjuna, there is a superior energy of mine which are all living entities who are struggling with material nature and are sustaining the universe. Chapter 7, Text 7 O conqueror of wealth, Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. Chapter 7, Text 14 This divine energy of mine, consisting of the three modes of material nature, is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Chapter 7, Text 15 Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. Chapter 7, Text 16 O best among the Bharatas, Arjuna, four kinds of pious men render devotional service unto me, the distressed, the desire of wealth, the inquisitive, and he who is searching for knowledge of the Absolute. Chapter 7, Text 19 After many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. Chapter 7, Text 25 I am never manifest to the foolish and unintelligent. For them I am covered by my eternal creative potency, Yoga Maya, and so the deluded world knows me not, who am unborn and infallible. Chapter 7, Text 26 O Arjuna, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present, and all things that are yet to come. I also know all living entities, but me no one knows. Chapter 7, Text 27 O Scion of Bharata, Arjuna, O Conqueror of the Foe, all living entities are born into delusion, overcome by the dualities of desire and hate. Chapter 7, Text 28 Persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life, whose sinful actions are completely eradicated, and who are freed from the duality of delusion, engage themselves in my service with determination. Chapter 8, Text 5 And whoever, at the time of death, quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this there is no doubt. 
Chapter 8, Text 6. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. Chapter 8, Text 7. Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna, and at the, and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities dedicated to me, and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. Chapter 8, Text 14 For one who remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain, O son of Pritha, because of his constant engagement in devotional service. Chapter 8, Text 15 After attaining me, the great souls, who are yogis in devotion, never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries, because they have attained the highest perfection. Chapter 8, Text 16 From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. Chapter 8, Text 28 A person who accepts the path of devotional service is not bereft of the results derived from studying the Vedas, performing austere sacrifices, giving charity, or pursuing philosophical and fruitive activities. At the end, he reaches the supreme abode. Chapter 9, Text 2 This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting, and it is joyfully performed. Chapter 9, Text 4 By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Chapter 10, Text, excuse me, Chapter 9, Text 10 This material nature is working under my direction, O son of Kunti and it is producing all moving and unmoving beings. By its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. Chapter 9, Text 11 Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all that be. Chapter 9, Text 12 those who are thus bewildered are attracted by demonic and atheistic views. In that deluded condition, their hopes for liberation, their fruitive activities, and their culture of knowledge are all defeated. Chapter 9, Text 13 O son of Pritha, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Chapter 9, Text 14 Always chanting my glories, endeavoring with great determination, bowing down before me, these great souls perpetually worship me with devotion. Chapter 9, Text 22 but those who worship me with devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and preserve what they have. Chapter 9, Text 25 Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. Those who worship ancestors go to the ancestors, and those who worship me will live with me. 
Chapter 9, text 26. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. Chapter 9, text 27. O son of Kunti, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities that you may perform, should be done as an offering unto me. Chapter 9, text 29. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. Chapter 9, text 30. Even if one commits the most abominable actions, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated. Text 9, excuse me. Chapter 9, text 32. O son of Pritha, those who take shelter in me, though they be of lower birth, women, Vaishas, as well as Sudras, can approach the supreme destination. Chapter 9, text 34. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Offer obeisances and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, Surely you will come to me. Chapter 10, text 8. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Chapter 10, text 9. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are surrendered to me, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss, enlightening one another and conversing about me. Chapter 10, Text 10 To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Chapter 10, Text 11 Out of compassion for them, I dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Chapter 10, text 12 and 13. Arjuna said, You are the supreme Brahman, the ultimate, the supreme abode and purifier, the absolute truth, and the eternal divine person. You are the primal God, transcendental and original, and you are the unborn and all-pervading beauty. All the great sages such as Narada, Asita, Devala, and Vyasa proclaim this of you, and now you yourself are declaring it to me. Chapter 10, text 41. Know that all beautiful, glorious, and mighty creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. Chapter 11, text 54. My dear Arjuna, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am, standing before you, and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. Chapter 11, text 55. My dear Arjuna, one who is engaged in my pure devotional service, free from the contaminations of previous activities and from mental speculation, who is friendly to every living entity, certainly comes to me. Chapter 12, Text 5 For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested, impersonal feature of the Supreme, Advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. Chapter 12, text 8. Just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me. 
Thus, you will live in me always, without a doubt. Chapter 12, Text 9 My dear Arjuna, O winner of wealth, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulated principles of Bhakti Yoga. In this way, you will develop a desire to attain to me. Chapter 12, Text 10 if you cannot practice the regulations of bhakti yoga, then just try to work for me, because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. Chapter 14, Text 4 It should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature, and that I am the seed-giving father. Chapter 4, Text 26 One who engages in full devotional service, who does not fall down in any circumstance, at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of Brahman. Chapter 14, Text 27 And I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman, which is the constitutional position of ultimate happiness and which is immortal, imperishable, and eternal. Chapter 15, Text 5 One who is free from illusion, false prestige, and false association, who understands the eternal, who is done with material lust, and is freed from the duality of happiness and distress, and who knows how to surrender unto the Supreme Person, attains to that eternal kingdom. Chapter 15, Text 6 That abode of mine is not illumined by the sun or moon, nor by electricity. One who reaches it never returns to this material world. Chapter 15, Text 7 The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. Chapter 15, Text 15 I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta, and I am the knower of the Vedas. Chapter 15, Text 19 Whoever knows me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, without doubting, is to be understood as the knower of everything, and he therefore engages himself in full devotional service, O son of Bharata. Chapter 18, Text 42 Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, Tolerance, honesty, wisdom, knowledge, and religiousness. These are the qualities by which the Brahmanas work. Chapter 18, Text 54 One who is thus transcendentally situated at once realizes the Supreme Brahman. He never laments nor desires to have anything. He is equally disposed to every living entity. In that state, he attains pure devotional service unto me. Chapter 18, Text 55 One can understand the Supreme Personality as he is only by devotional service. And when one is in full consciousness of the Supreme Lord by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. Chapter 18, Text 58 If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditional life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. Chapter 18, Text 61 the Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living entities, 
who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy. Chapter 18, text 65. Always think of me and become my devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Chapter 18, text 66. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Chapter 18, text 68. For one who explains the supreme secret to the devotees, devotional service is guaranteed. And at the end, he will come back to me. Chapter 18, text 69. There is no servant in this world more dear to me than he, nor will there ever be one more dear. Chapter 18, text 78. Wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will also certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality. That is my opinion. Thus ends the 108 texts of the Bhagavad Gita as it is by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Haribo Namaste.